praise Jesus today, everyone. The last couple days I was praying and talking to Jesus about some questions I had in regarding the gathering together of the saints in the air and this snatching up or this being taken up. And I did a bit of research on this because we know that the word rapture isn't in the Bible, but that idea certainly is in the Bible. It is a scriptural teaching about the rapture. But a lot of the ideas around the rapture that the Christian church has taught are very, very poor. For example, the Christian church teaches just believe in the rapture and you won't have to go through great tribulation. You will be snatched out before this time period. And we know Jesus didn't teach that. For example, um, if you look at Matthew chapter 24, you see Jesus talking about the, the, the great tribulation. If you look at verse 21, Jesus says, For then there will be a great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. So you hear about the elect in these days being shortened in the tribulation. So then the question is to a lot of people, well, when, when are we going to go up and be with the Lord? And what Jesus says about this in verse 29, he says immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven will be shut. So it's directly after the tribulation, these things are happening. Then the sign of the son of man will appear in heaven. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the son of man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a sound of a great trumpet. And they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the heaven to the other. So this gathering together or this being caught up together when the angels are gathering everyone is not before the tribulation. But if you look at verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days. See, all of these tribulations and trials that happen in the world happen for our refinement, for the purification of Jesus's church. You and I absolutely will go through great tribulation. None of us are going to escape trials and tribulations and great tribulation on the earth. All of us go through that. So this belief that the Christian church has been teaching that we will not suffer persecution, that we will not go through trials and tribulations, that we will be caught up, we will be saved from that is all a lie. But what we will be taken away from is the judgment of God that happens next. After we have been taken out of the world and the Holy Spirit retracted from the world, the world is not going through um, trials and tribulations anymore that just happen by men through persecution. But what the world will experience is the hand of God's judgment. And it's not for the sake of refining his church anymore, but it is for judgment and punishment for sinners who refuse to repent. And at this period of time, there will be no more chances for anyone to repent on the earth. When all the true saints have been pulled up to heaven, the world will mourn. They will see the sign of the Son of God coming on the clouds with power and great glory. And they will have no more opportunity to, to repent or confess their sins. They will know that they are the damned, exactly like how all of those who were shut out of Noah's ark were mourning when they were drowning. They were probably saying, please give us another chance, God. But there was no more chance or opportunity for salvation. The night had already come. The rains were coming down, floods coming up, and the whole world was drowned. All of them died in the flood. And the same thing is going to happen again, but it will be with fire. We need to be prepared because the door is closing. I want to share with you a few things that the Lord showed me while praying about the rapture. 
And one of them is, interestingly enough, the meaning of the word rapture. If you look up this, the Greek idea of rapture, what it means is we are taken away or we are caught up. And this idea of being taken, it reminds us of when Jesus speaks about the end. He speaks about this in Matthew chapter 24 when he says, um, two men will be in a field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and the other left. And I prayed about this and I said, Lord, where are they being taken to? I don't care where in the world this is happening. I know it's worldwide. And the Spirit of God showed me that that is the same exact question that Jesus' disciples were asking. And I had never thought of it like that because I had always thought that the disciples were asking, where, Lord, where will this take place? But the disciples were actually asking, where are these people being taken to? And here's the really interesting part of this. When Jesus gives his answer to his disciples where they are taken, it is a twofold riddle. And depending on which way you take it or which side you on or which side you are on, both are the right interpretation. So if these people that Jesus are talking about when he's you know, answering their question, where they're taken to, if they're being taken into judgment, if they're being taken to hell, like how all of those who missed the ark were taken in judgment, they were taken away, they were taken by the storm. So if these people that Jesus are speaking about are being taken away into hell, then they are not just a body, but they are a corpse. And a corpse has a very negative connotation. It's not the body of Christ, but it is a dead body. And some interpretations speak that Jesus said that where the corpse lies, there the vultures will be gathered. A vulture also has a very negative implication spiritually. A vulture represents a demon. It represents death. And so if you are being taken in judgment and you're asking, where, Lord, or where, where are these people being taken? Then they're being taken in judgment and they're taking your dead corpse to hell. Vultures represent demons. Demons are allowed to feast on your flesh and to take you to judgment, take you to hell. But on the flip side of this riddle, if they are being taken into everlasting life, and the question is, where are they taken? Then they are being taken as a body, which is the body of Christ, and they are being taken on the wings of the eagle up to the cloud of witnesses, which is in the heavens. So either way you interpret this is going to be right, but it is hinged upon whether you are part of the body of Christ or the body of Satan, the body of the world. So Jesus gives this riddle in a twofold manner that it can mean two things and it is both where all the world will end in the end. Either we will be with the cloud of witnesses, with Jesus Christ forever and ever, caught up to be with him, or we will be taken down to hell into judgment for all eternity that was supposed to be for Satan and his angels and his demons. We're going to spend either eternity in heaven or in hell. And we have to choose to go with Jesus into everlasting life. I know there are a lot of deceptions about the rapture. People think that you have to believe in a pre-trib rapture, that you have to believe that um, Jesus is going to snatch you up before things get really bad on this earth. And if you don't believe that, then you won't be raptured. But Jesus never spoke about that, and he never expected us to understand his whole plan or to understand doctrines perfectly. But Jesus is always looking at our hearts, and if our hearts are prepared, if we have made our, our hearts as, as, as pure before the Lord because, you know, he's purifying us and putting on our white garments, then whenever he calls, we will be prepared. <clears throat> A lot of people will not be prepared, but they have been putting their faith in the rapture and they will go their entire life 
up to their own death. And when Jesus comes, when they go to meet Jesus, he will say, away from me, you who commit iniquity, I don't know you. And they will not have been prepared to meet the Lord. But I want, I want to be prepared to meet Jesus. I want him to say, good and well done, my faithful servant. I want to enter into his presence with thanksgiving. One of my other questions about the rapture when I was praying to the Lord is, how is it that the Apostle Paul spoke about souls sleeping? Because I know that souls don't soul sleep. And this is evident by when Jesus was speaking about how God is the God of the living, not the God of the dead. And also many saints have seen the afterlife and came back to report how they saw people there. Such people as King David, other great men of faith, and even their family members in heaven. They're not soul sleeping in the ground, waiting around for the rapture. But if you read the Apostle Paul's words, you may come to the conclusion that, uh, you know, all the people of old, up, up from the point of time that Jesus resurrected from the dead up till the present time, that all of the dead are sleeping, meaning they are just dead in the earth. And then on the final day, on the final judgment, Jesus, you know, they, he blows a trumpet and the dead in Christ rise first. And then after the dead in Christ rise, then we also hear that trumpet and then go up to heaven. So I was praying about this. How, Lord, can the Apostle Paul say this? Um, because I know people are already in heaven. Those who have died in Christ are not just soul sleeping, waiting for, waiting for the rapture. They're already in heaven with you. And the Lord showed me that the reason why these souls precede us or they go up first is because they have went before us. They have died before us. See, all the people who have went before us that were in the faith, such as my mom, who was a believer, who went to be with the Lord, all of these people had their rapture or their gathering up, their snatching up to heaven before we have. And they certainly will not be waiting in the dirt for their rapture until we have. If I die today and the Lord snatches me up and I'm brought before him, I can know that my mom is already in heaven and that those who have deceased in their physical bodies before me are not just waiting dead in the earth, but they are already with the Lord. So every single person who is caught up or raptured, it happens at their final breath. From our perspective, it looks like nothing's happening. No one's being raptured. Nothing supernatural is happening. In our perspective, people have been dying for thousands of years. To remember that in God's perspective, a thousand years is like, and all these things have been happening in seconds for him. And so in God's view, or when he tries to explain Catching up or a rapture or a gathering of the church, a gathering of his saints, how it appears to us is all of this must be happening at the same time. <clears throat> and then if you've seen Hollywood's rendition of the rapture, it looks like everyone just goes up to heaven all at the exact same time when the trumpet blows. But from God's perspective, it is happening pretty much all at the same time. But from our perspective, this whole thing, this rapture of the church, has been taking 2,000 years. You know, my mom died five, six years ago. And um, other brothers in the faith have died 10, 20, 50, 80 years ago. But their rapture or their snatching up to the Lord to be in the cloud of witnesses happened at that period of time. And even if you look at the pictures of people being raptured, like if you look at people's renditions that believe it all happens at the same time, you will notice that there are souls higher up in the air and there are souls lower down that are just leaving the earth. Now, if it all happened at exactly the same time, all the souls should be at the same altitude. But the fact that there are some souls higher than other souls, meaning means that those souls that are higher left their bodies 
earlier than those souls that are lower down. In our perspective of things, we can interpret everything to be natural. People have just been dying. No one's been raptured. Nothing supernatural is happening. But one day we're going to see from the Lord's perspective if we are worthy to enter into his kingdom. And we will see that all these things that we were doing, if we were doing them in the spirit of God, were supernatural. We will see things not in this dim mirror that we see them now, but we will see, we will see them from our father's perspective. And the big problem that Christianity has right now is they are not looking from God's perspective. They are looking from Hollywood's perspective. And they're looking from the perspective of all these prophets who are soothsayers, who are uh, preaching sensationalism, who are making people uh, have false hopes, thinking that they don't have to endure with Jesus or go through trials and tribulations to the end. They have put all their hope in this false image of Jesus and all this false interpretation of the Bible. But if we want to see from God's perspective, then we have to start praying and say, Lord, show me what these things mean. Help me to understand who you are. I want to see from God's perspective. I don't want to see from men's perspective or my own interpretation of the scripture. I want to see what's actually happening. You are the truth. You are the way. You are the life. And if we start to make Jesus our teacher, if we start to make his spirit our guide, then he will lead us in the truth. We won't be deceived by people's ideas of the rapture or their ideas of what will happen next. I know on the internet right now, there's a lot of speculation when the rapture will take place. People are saying that the, that the Antichrist or the man of perdition will be revealed in a few years. I don't know, they think 2025 or something. And then they think then three years after that, which will be 2028, will be the rapture of the church. And they, they make all of these um, ideas based on other people's knowledge or supposed revelations. And they think they have the plan of God figured out. But that's not how it works. No one can be able to foil God's plan. If people could understand God's plan, then certainly Satan would have been able to understand it. And certainly Satan would have, would have been able to foil God's plan. He would have been able to kill Jesus. He would have been able to find the, uh, the Virgin Mary and destroy her before it ever happened. But as it, as it happened, even though there was all these prophecies about where Jesus would be born and when he would be born and how it would take place, no one was, was able to foil God's plan. All those who were trying to kill the baby Jesus, none of them were able to kill him. He was protected by God. And go figure that God is more powerful than Satan and that none of us know his plan. We will not be able to predict the future using prophecies. We will not be able to navigate our life or other people's lives into eternity just using scriptures or trying to figure out how all this stuff will take place. But if we are humble before God and just say, Jesus, I trust you. I want to hold your hand and go with you. I don't understand what is going to take place. I don't understand all these prophecies, but I do trust you, Lord. And I do give you my life. Everything that I am, I want to be a vessel to be used by you. I trust you. I trust your plan. I trust your way. And I will walk with you even if I don't understand because I know that your plan for me is best. If we can be as children walking with him, then he will lead us and guide us into everlasting life. And we won't have to be worried about what people think or worried about navigating into eternity by reading more and more commentaries and more books and listening to what prophets say will happen with the next wave of, I don't know, COVID or the next war or the next famine upon earth or the next prophet that comes out. We won't have to be worried about that stuff. A relationship with Jesus is about walking with him and trusting him, walking by faith, not by sight, every single day. Every single day, denying ourselves, picking up, picking up our cross and going with him by faith. And if we live by faith, then step by step, we grow spiritually. The Lord gives us revelation as we walk with him. 
And when we trust him and he knows that we trust him, then he feeds us more of his truth. He gives us more of his awesome revelation. And then we can encourage others because we're being fed by, we're being fed by the life giver, not just by some regurgitated information from a pastor or some old information from a Bible study. So I want to encourage you that the rapture is real. It doesn't happen as the Christian church is preaching, but there is a snatching up. There is a gathering of the saints. There is a cloud of witnesses. We will go be with the Lord in the sky, like, like the eagle. We will raise up like the wings, like the eagle. We are the body of Christ and we are the ones who are God's elect if we choose to stay with him and hold his hand to the very end. But those Christians who feel entitled, that feel like they are the ones that are going to be raptured, not you, that they will be sucked out of persecution, trials, and tribulations, they're going to have the scare of their life when they are left behind, when they stand at the door knocking, saying, Lord, open to us, and he and they are shut out, and the Lord says to them, go away. I don't know you, you who commit sin and commit iniquity. It's not about believing certain doctrines that the church has taught. It's not about being right, but it is about who we follow. It is about following and knowing Jesus Christ, being led by his Holy Spirit. And if we're led by him, even if we don't understand perfectly, even if our <clears throat> ideas of the Bible are a little bit off. It doesn't matter because Jesus is leading us. He will correct us. He will discipline us and he will lead us into everlasting life. So don't be discouraged by people's ideas of the rapture, their different interpretations. Don't be discouraged by any of that, but rather keep your eyes on Jesus, knowing that he will lead us and guide us. He is the one that knows his plan. We don't have to know it. We have to trust him and hold his hand to the very end. May the grace of Jesus be with you.